It is so important that we stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit in this in the season of our life on this earth that we go where he leads us that we do what he leads us to do that we don't get all confused and start living for ourselves but that he literally walks us through the minefield of this world so that we always walk in the victory that Christ has provided for us well we spent what 3 weeks talking about this quality of yielding ourselves always to the Lord. That as we walk throughout our life, as we walk throughout our days, we are yielded to the leading of the Lord, of the Holy Spirit's leading in our life. So I want to encourage you, we said a lot of things in those last three weeks, so I want to encourage you, listen to those messages, outline them, make them yours so that you can help others. Tonight I want to talk about another quality and this is this is a big one. You know there's really three. Well actually you're going to find that all of these go together, but when you talk about yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit and living a life that way, part of that is this quality that we're going to talk about tonight. It's the quality of being open. Of being open as we walk through life. God does not want you closed in any way. So many times as believers, we, we make decisions to close ourselves. It, it might be like this. We get hurt by somebody and we close. We, we decide not to be open in this area and we go, you know what? I'm not going to forgive that person. Right? And that closes us. We are to live our life completely open. For some people... Man, it might be that all of a sudden the Lord starts stirring you to do something and, and you're just like, I can't do that. That's bigger than, than I am. Or whatever it is, I don't have enough money. Or man, I, I, I would have to jeopardize this or this. I just, no, no, you're, you're not open. God wants you to be open. Whatever he says do, we do. Does that mean you have to know how to do it? No, nope, you just be open. Because we're going to see a principle in the word of God. If you're not open, then he's unable to lead you. And right now, there's a lot of Christians that are saying, I'm not willing to do this, and I'm not willing to do that, and, and I'm not going to honor God here, and I'm not going to do this. And they're living their lives, and they actually think they're okay because they're not feeling this sense of I'm really missing it and it's because they're not open and so we got to be careful the Holy Spirit will help you stay open so let's go back to the beginning of this in talking about being open so turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8 and we'll jump off there foundational scripture Romans chapter 8 verse 14 you guys okay so this is this is an open Bible Bible study tonight, right? Romans chapter 8, verse 14. It says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 15. Now, this is a big point, and I want to kind of showcase this tonight. For, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. We have not received that spirit. We as children of God have not received the spirit of bondage which causes us to walk in fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption which does what? Whereby it causes us to cry, Abba, Father, denoting intimacy. You gotta know this, the Holy Spirit will never lead you into bondage. If you don't know that, you will not be open. No matter what, it, it doesn't matter if it doesn't make sense to you, if it doesn't matter if you don't, if it kind of gets your emotions riled up, if he is leading you to do it, it will never hurt you. It'll never bring bondage into your life. It will do nothing but bring you into freedom and life and victory. You have to have revelation of that. 
In John 16, 13, you don't have to turn there. You could write it in your notes. You know this scripture, John 16, 13. This is Jesus talking to his disciples. Now he's, he's saying, guys, I'm about to go away and where I'm going, you can't come right now. He's about to go to the cross. It's the last time he's with them, right? Until, his crucif until after his crucifixion, then resurrection. And then he was with them again before he left this earth and went back to heaven. But he said this, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Now we know from John 17, 17, that the word of God is truth. He said, thy word is truth. Sanctify them, Father. Purify them. Sanctify them. Set them apart for my use by your word, because your word is truth. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, what will he do? He will guide you, right, into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So the Holy Spirit will never lead you into bondage. He will always lead you into truth. And John chapter 8 tells us, right? It says, if you continue in the word, verse 31 and 32, you'll know the truth or you'll know the word and the word of God will make you free. So therefore, not only will he not ever lead you in the bondage, he will always lead you into freedom. Always. Doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter if he tells you empty your bank account and give it to that ministry. Give it to the church. Give, do this, do that. D go here. It doesn't matter. I could tell you stories. What is the one ministry couple? Pastor Edwin, you went there to the Amazon jungle, right? Man, these people, I think they went there with like, what, $200 or something? I mean, they had nothing. They go to Panama. They, had no, they bought a one-way ticket. They've got small kids. God told them, I want you to go here, and I want you to minister. You're going to be by, by in a jungle, and I want you to minister in a leper colony. That's all he told them. They get off the plane. They, they, don't, they speak English. They don't speak the language. They have no money. There's no place to, to go. And God worked everything. Today, they are rocking the whole Darien jungle. The stories they tell. But could you imagine? It freaked the wife out. God told me we're, we're, we're to go to Panama. She's like, what? Right? I mean, they tell stories about living in a tent out in the jungle where they're in hammocks and they hear the purring of an over 2,000 pound Bengal tiger, and as he walks on their army tent that they got out of a garbage dump, now it rains 200 inches a year, and every time it would rain, it would soak everything, and, the, and, and literally, the, could you imagine a Bengal tiger going all the way down your body, just kind of walked and pressed himself into the tent and just walked down the side of it? They heard the purring of this, no. right? Have, wake up at night. The Lord would wake them up at night. They'd go over to their little child's hammock and, and kill the poisonous snake that was sleeping with them. But, but they went. See, see that, that just, that, I'm saying this, that's tilting me. It's like, whoa, are you kidding me? But you know, if he said go, you'd have to go. But here's the really cool thing. If he said go, you'd want to go right? The, holy, the reason why I'm saying this is you have to, to live a life where you're yielded to him, to live a life where you're open to him. You cannot be moved by circumstances. You can't be moved by people. You can't be moved by anything but him. And in order to live like that, you have to know him intimately. And the Holy Spirit will guide you into knowing him intimately. The Holy Spirit he is the spirit of truth, and the truth always makes us free. It jumps down in Romans chapter 8, to verse 16. Now he tells us how he's going to lead us. It says, the spirit himself bears witness. 
with our spirit that we are the children of God. How does the Holy Spirit lead us? How is the Holy Spirit going to lead you and guide you into everything in your life? Everything. Do you know they tell stories when the curtain was up in Russia and it was illegal to, to gather as Christians, right? The Christians, when they would meet, they would say, okay, the Lord will tell you where we're meeting next time. That's how they stayed safe. Where are you going to church? When are you going to church? Don't know. The Holy Spirit has to tell me because the KGB would try to infiltrate them and they would just go where the Spirit of God led them. The Holy Spirit will never hurt you. He will always keep you safe. And this, this is the thing. Sometimes he'll lead you right through a fiery furnace. And in the natural, that fiery furnace could look really scary. But with him, it's nothing. Because he's with me. See, we've got to, see, this is Christianity. It's not a religion. We're talking about the God of heaven who will never leave you. He knows right where you are tonight. He knows right what you're going to face. And he knows where he's going to take you. I love that. The Holy Spirit, he bears witness with our spirit. But he never leads you by your feelings, ever. If you, if you decide to start doing just what you feel, your life will be a mess in a very short period of time. Right? He'll never lead you by feelings. He will never lead you by your head by your intellect. You can, you can get that pad of paper out and do the pros and cons until you're blue in the face, but how do you know? You just, you, you'll never figure out the will of God that way. He doesn't lead us that way. He never leads us by reasonings. You know, well, I just, you know, I reason this is the safe way to go. No, you better be careful with that, Right? Because these are areas that the enemy will confuse and deceive. He never leads you by logic. Have you ever been led by God to do something that in the natural is totally illogical? Well, everybody should be saying, you know, pastor, I live like that. Because the language of faith by which we walk and live we call those things which be not as though they are. So if I ever feel weak, if I ever have literally knowledge that I am very weak, then I stand up and go, I'm strong. I'm strong in the Lord. If, if, I, if I don't have any clue what to do, because I just can't see my next step, what does a Christian say? I thank you, Father, that I could see. Right? If I have no funds and it just seems in the natural, what am I going to do? Oh, Father, I thank you that you've made me rich. Do you see that? Logical. Logic goes right out the window. Now, does that mean that we're not to ever, that we're to just remove our mind? Nope. We have to renew our mind. Because see, this world that we've lived in is upside down. But because we've lived in it so long, it can seem like it's right side up. Makes no sense to touch a leper and say, of course it's my will to heal you. Right? It makes no sense to take a piece of wood and command the Red Sea to part. It makes no sense to know when you're thrown in a lion's den that you're not dying that night. It doesn't make any, it's not logical. But it's godly. God never leads us by our understanding. Proverbs 3, 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and don't lean or don't rely on your own understanding, but in all your ways, consider him 
and he'll direct your paths. But he doesn't lead us by our understanding. Here's a big one. God never leads you by your circumstances. So don't let your circumstances lead you. Does, does that make sense? God never leads you by your emotions. Now, every one of these things on the list, guess what? Satan will lead you by all those. Have you ever, have you ever felt emotion to where you're just, you get a diagnosis and, and you're just like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Right? Your emotions, something happens. You hear something and all of a sudden your emotions are freaking out. You know that's not God leading you. And so we have to, in the midst of that, go, wait a minute. I know that the Holy Spirit is here to lead me. And he's here. He'll never leave me. He's in me for all eternity. So my emotions are freaking out, but he's here. I know this is not him, so what do I do? I rise up, I let him lead me, and he'll give me a scripture, and he'll give me something to say to command my emotions to calm down. Because he never leads me by my emotions. Here's a gigantic one. God will never lead you by money. If you're led by money, you're not led by the Holy Spirit. Does God want you to look for the best deal? Sure. But don't be led by that. You could buy the wrong thing. Right? I remember when we were a mobile church, just on a smaller level, we're a mobile church, and finally, you know, the Lord really got on me about, you know, you're preaching faith, but these people are sitting on these rusted out, broken folding chairs at Kiewit Middle School. So he had us buy chairs and change the whole thing. We turned, we turned that school into a church as much as we could in 45 minutes. You should see the manual we have when we were a mobile church. I mean, it was, it was cool, huh? Yeah. Sarah was the black backdrop girl. 36, 12 feet high, 36 feet wide with two screens on the side. We had all this stuff, right? Well, literally, so we, we bought this moving truck. Jeanette and I went test driving U-Hauls. They'd sell them when they get older, right? Remember that? That was kind of rough because some of them were really rough. I mean, she's bouncing around and all this other stuff. Well, we bought a 1995 one. And, and it was so funny because it was, I don't remember how many thousands it was. Was it like eight or 9,000? I, I don't or seven, eight, or 9,000, whatever. And they had went through the whole thing, put all new belts on it, new, uh, refueled up the air conditioning system, new tires, all this stuff. And I think it was like seven, $8,000. And so the guy's on the phone, and, he, and, and the corporate offices were like in Texas or something, so you'd have to negotiate over the phone. So he goes, well, the way this works is this is the price, but if you want to ask for a better price, drop it a little bit or whatever, you can just tell me, I'll get them on the phone, and then they'll approve it or not. And so he gets on the phone with them, and he goes, so, sir, do you, want, do you want to pay this price, or would you like to get a better price? And I said, no, no, I, I go, uh, I'd like to offer, I'd like to offer, I'd like to make an offer on that truck. And he's like, okay, what's your offer? <laughs> and so I said, well, we'll give you $3,000 today. And, and it tilted the guy, right? He just, he's like, well, and he put the phone, you know, he's like, well, you know, they, they would never sell. I said, you know, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but could you just ask them? So he's like, yeah, you know, whatever. I mean, he's just a, the, the employee there. So he gets them on the phone and asks them, and he's waiting. And pretty soon, he hears, I, we hear this, really? <laughs> oh, okay, great. The, okay, wow, they took, I've never sold it, you know. So we bought this thing for $3,000. You know, we used this thing all the years we needed to use it. Then when the Lord blessed us with this building, you know, they were doing drug deals behind the, the truck out in the parking lot out here. So we're like, you know, I mean, we're all about entrepreneurship, but maybe not in that area, right? You know, so, so we, we decided to sell, sell the truck. And, and so it was so funny, uh, a pastor called me up and we had to move from Kiewit Middle School one summer 
it's actually when Pastor Edwin came to the church, right? And uh, so we were at, I forget the name of the school. Was it Anderson, maybe? Anderson Elementary School. So uh, we were there. Grace Abbott. Oh, Grace Abbott, okay. So Grace Abbott. So we're there, and apparently there was a pastor that lived in the neighborhood. Or he was going to the church. They went through a church split. They lost their building. They were a mobile church, and this guy had taken over the church. So he called me up, and he says, hey, he goes, you know, that summer, you guys had this truck, and, and, you know, we know you're not at Keywood anymore. Do you still have the truck, and would you be open to selling it? And I'm like, you know, absolutely, would love to sell it. You know, we just made a decision to sell it. We don't need it anymore. And he goes, well, you know, he goes, there's a police officer in my, in my, um, in my church that uh, he's like a master mechanic. He used to work as a mechanic. Could we come down and look at it? And so they came down, and we're like, yeah, take it for a test drive. I'll do all this stuff. Right, all the time, we got to be led by the Spirit of God. So they come in and they said, wow, this is in really good shape and this would be perfect. And, uh, and then he kind of started going, you know, um, would you guys be willing to take 5000 for that? And so as soon as he said that, just down in my spirit, it was just very clear, 3000 And so I said, oh, you know, I'm, I, no, I go, we wouldn't be willing to take 5000 for it. And he goes, well, I understand. I said, now I'd be willing to take 3000 for it. And he goes, okay. And he's like, what? <laughs> he goes, 3000 3, And so we sold it to him. But then he goes, well, can we take it today? And I said, no, 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 no. We want to take it to our mechanic and have it all checked out. And we got to fill it up for ga- with gas. No, you don't have to do No, no, no. We really want to do that, right? Well, we had to be led by the Spirit of God. Do you know that didn't cost this church $2,000? right? It didn't. It, it, never, it never costs you or hurts you, I should say that. It doesn't hurt you to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, right? We have to know this. Money. Don't ever be led by money, right? Don't be led by money because you can, you can sell yourself short. You, I mean, do you know, I know people that have moved away for more money, from a healthy church and moved out of state and lost their family and lost their career and lost everything. You gotta be real careful to never be moved by money. Here's a big one. Do you know that the Holy Spirit never leads anyone by offense? This is a huge one. There are people that God will lead them to a place to be planted in a church or to work or whatever it is, and offense will end up leading them out. The Holy Spirit will never lead you by offense. When when you're led by these things that I've mentioned, and there's more, but these are just the ones the Lord kind of gave me today. But when you're led by these things, it will cost you. It will always cost you. Why? Because the enemy only steals, kills, and destroys. The Holy Spirit leads us by our own spirit. Hallelujah. There are things you can do that will make you more aware of his leadings. You hear, you yield to him, and then you follow him. But see, here's the big thing. If you're not open, you're not going to hear. Right? Have you ever been offended by somebody? You won't receive anything from them. Right? you got to be careful. Satan will throw thoughts to try to get you to be led outwardly when the Holy Spirit, he wants to lead you from the inside. A sure leading. Always remember this as we talk about this openness, as we talk about yielding, as we talk about other things. You know, there's steadfastness, there's a clear conscience, living with a clear conscience, which really comes alongside of these. Disobedience in these areas will dull you to being sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading. This is huge. So let's talk about this openness a little bit. We need to be open to his leadings and to his voice. We have to have a right mindset and a heart set in this area. 
So we got to get all the areas out of our life where we're not open to the Holy Spirit talking to us, right? And this is, this is right where, man, I could speak for a lot of the church in America. This is right where we are. We, we are all about serving God as long as it's what we want to do. We're all about loving our church and loving our pastor as long as we want to. But pastor, you better not push me too hard or I'll just go home and watch other ministers on TV, right? And, I, and I'm conscious of the fact that we have many of our church family home tonight, but they're home because of a different reason, right? With the virus and feeling unsafe and all that. That's a different deal. But when you're led by a fence and you're just home because, you know, man, I'm telling you, Kenneth Copeland, Keith Moore, all these guys, some of the greatest teaching gifts in the body of Christ, they can say anything to you and it doesn't bother you because they're on TV. Andrew Womack doesn't offend anybody who's sitting in their living room, right? But when you're living together, so we got to be careful about these things. The Holy Spirit is unable to talk to us if we're not open to him. So we have to stay open. So this is a key scripture that I want you to see tonight. Go to John chapter 7 in verse 17. John 7, 17. This is a huge scripture that, man, this has slapped me in the face many, many times. And when the scripture slaps you in the face, you just feel good. It says here, it says, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. The New American Standard Bible says this, if anyone is willing to do his will, he will know of the teaching, whether it is of God or whether I speak of myself. So if any man is not willing to do his will, he's not going to be able to know. He's not going to be able to discern things. In other words, if you're not open, you just won't be able to know. If you want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's direction, you must be very responsive to his correction. Right? If you refuse his correction, you have dulled yourself to his direction. And this is right where most people are living. You get blind spots in your life. And he will try to show them to you. But you have to be willing. You have to stay open. And this is why I started this out by saying to be open, you have to know that he will never bring you into bondage. He'll never hurt you. Amen? Do you know that God never would ask you or lead you to do anything that he won't actually empower you to do it and show you exactly how to do it? Not being open in one area blocks you from being open in other areas. So we have to be careful. Unwillingness, in other words, will hinder you from hearing from God. Does that make sense tonight? I, I really am trusting the Lord to make this clear because this will help us. First Thessalonians, go ahead and turn there. This is one of those in Bible school, you know, when you have competitions to, uh, you know, like when you go to Bible camp when you're a kid, they would have like children's camp or whatever. You know, they will have, they will have competitions on who could memorize the most scripture. So everybody, of course, Jesus wept. They go, to, they, go to the, they go to the short ones, right? You know, first. This one is really easy. It's, it's four words. First Thessalonians 5, 19. Quench not the spirit. This word quench in the Greek means to extinguish or to smother out. Don't extinguish him. Don't quench him. 
If you do, it'll dull you. If all you are aware of is what you want, then you won't be aware of what he wants. And this is another trap of the enemy. Satan wants to get you up to here with your life. Pastor, you don't understand. I've got this and I've got that. Is it all real? Absolutely, it's real. And what should you do to get sensitive? You should absolutely humble yourself. How do I do that, Pastor? By casting all of those cares, all of those worries, all of those concerns, once and for all on him. Now, you won't be up to here with what you want or what you need. Because if we're up to here with our life, we're, we're not going to be open to his leading. This is, this is a huge, that was worth you coming here tonight. Because look at your life. The Holy Spirit will show you if you're too full of you, what you want. Cause, and it's a little deceptive because you might really be filled with a want. Oh, I just want my family to be serving God. Boy, that sounds so good. But you've got to be careful that if you're so consumed with that, that you're, you're just, it's consuming you, now you're worrying about it. Now you're concerned about it. That will dull you. Does that make sense? Well, I'll tell you, instead of that, just start going, Father, I thank you that my kids are going to serve you. If they're not saved, they're going to be radically saved. Just do that for a while, and you know what you'll feel? You'll actually start feeling light. Because everything with God is just, it's a rest. This is huge. If, you, if all you are aware of is what you want, you'll not be aware of what he wants. Some people, it's just all about my ministry. Just all about what I do for God. Right? I just, I have to have a position in ministry. I have to do this. I have to do that. You're dulling yourself. So let's look at Jesus' example here as we're coming to the close of this. Matthew chapter 26 Verse 36, it says, it says here, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto, his, into, unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Jebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful. Notice, his spirit's not, but his soul is. He's human. Even unto death, that's pretty sorrowful. The Bible said the angels had to come minister to him. Notice that God will do everything to help you. He says, tarry ye here and watch with me. Notice even with Jesus, he didn't want to be alone. Stay away from being alone. Surround yourself with people of like faith, right? Even the master needed that. And he went a little further, fell on his face and prayed. And he said, oh, my father. Now, he's, I believe if you read these Greek words, he was coming to a full, he had a revelation that he knew he was going to a cross. He knew he was going to redeem man. But I think in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was sweating blood, he came to a full revelation of what it was going to mean to be made sin for us. He said, oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. In other words, Father, if there's any way else we could redeem man without me taking their place. But then look at what he said, but nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That's Jesus' example. He was completely open. Completely open. John 8, 29, and he, sent, and he that sent me is with me. This is Jesus talking. The Father hath not left me alone. You may feel alone, but you're never alone as a child of God. For I do always those things that please him. Do you know one thing that we know that Jesus never said while he was on the earth? 
He never one time said, what do I want to do? We should get that out of our vocabulary if we want to stay open. Isaiah 119, we know this scripture, don't we? If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Willing and obedient, open. Psalm 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law. Fast forward, New Testament believer would read it. Yea, thy word is within my heart. I delight. It's my delight to do your will because your word is in my heart. Matthew 10, 39. Another powerful scripture along these lines. He that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Jumping down to Matthew 16, verse 25. Matthew 16, 25. I wouldn't try to turn to these because I'm going quick. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Here's a big key. I would write this down. The secret to your fulfillment. This is the secret. How are you going to be fulfilled? By pleasing him. You were created that way. When you get a revelation of this, you'll be free because you'll no longer be living for yourself. And you'll be fulfilled. You'll be satisfied because you're not made to be fulfilled by things or achievements or all. It doesn't fill you. Thinking only of yourself makes you miserable. Thinking only, now this is Bible, this is a principle. Thinking only of what you want will make you miserable. Thinking about pleasing him will fulfill you. That's the way, that's the way it is. See, you have to come to a realization that I remember, and I'm still coming to the realization, but I remember when this started in me, when I finally realized, wow, you know, God knows more than I do. And I know that sounds funny, but literally, God made me. God made you. God knows exactly what makes you and I tick. God knows what excites and fulfills us. He knows. God knows what I'm good at, and God knows what I'm not good at, right? God knows what I need in every situation. Now, I want to close with this scripture. Now, right now, I know what you're thinking. This is a supernatural sermon because it's 759, and I'm closing with a scripture. Go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 10. I quoted it earlier, but this is huge. And we might have to talk more about this because, wow. But Colossians 2.10 says this, and you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. So I want, I want to break down this word complete. It's the Greek word that would pr be pronounced play, P-L-A-Y, ro-o, R-O slash R-O, R slash O, play ro-o. It's not spelled that way, it's spelled P-R, P or P-L-E-R-O-O. But it means this, it means full. In other words, you are full in him. It means, or, and, and specifically, it means to be made full. You are made full in him. You are, another meaning of this word, you are accomplished in him. Wow. Here's another one. You are fulfilled. It, this Greek word means fulfilled in him. Here's another meaning of this word. You are increasing in him. You are satisfied in him. This word also means you are caused to abound in him. 
Here's another one. You are carried to the end in him. I'm telling you, and I want to leave you with this thought. Be open. Yield to him. He will see you through to the end. When you walk through the waters, they won't overtake you. Through the rivers, they won't overflow you. When you go through the fire, not if, but when, it will not even kindle upon you because he's with you. He'll protect you. He'll protect your family. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to be concerned. Anything the enemy can throw at you and I in our life, we have the greater one in us and whoever's born of God overcomes the world system. When the enemy comes in, right, like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard against him. Amen?